أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله أصحاب أجمعين my dear uh, respected brothers and sisters Imam Safi Khan Imam Karim Abu Zaid Imam Siraj Wahaj and guests Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh you, you sound like it's before iftar. <laughs> yeah, it's not Ramadan and it's not a Thursday. Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Uh, it's always a pleasure and an honor for me to uh, share in any event that uh, uh, Al Huda Dar es Salaam holds. And I was very uh, pleased when uh, Brother Zafar approached me about this date to check the calendar and I said, you know, if it's humanly possible, inshallah, we'll make it happen. And then I thought I was doing something really big. I thought, you know, I'll go to Atlanta for the ICNA conference. I'll fly back. I'll go to uh, pick up my family, go to Al Huda uh, Dar es Salaam's event. Next morning, I'll fly to Chicago, go to the mass conference. And then, <laughs> and then I thought, oh, you know, I, I, this must be a big deal. Then I looked at Imam Siraj Wahaj's schedule and I found that he's one step ahead of me in every one of those events and doing more, subhanAllah. So, mashallah, we welcome Imam Siraj Wahaj uh, for that and we thank him for, for blessing us with being here tonight. My time is short in, uh, for this uh, talk and I am to focus on four, one of the four themes. And you saw the themes, so if you want to repeat them with me, it'll be a good sort of cardiovascular slash brain exercise. See it? No, <laughs> please. I mean, this is not fundraising. You're not being charged yet, right? See it? See it. Say it? Say it. Share, it. Share it? Seize it? it. MashaAllah. So I will be see it, inshallah. We are at a major crossroads in the Muslim community. And as we find ourselves now, in almost 1434 years after Hijrah, living in America and developing our institutions, one of the most important things facing us right now is the need for a solid vision for the future of our families, our communities, and our organizations. This vision can be impossible if we allow it to be so. Or it can be very possible and very much within our reach with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get to the home of the hearts, we will have to sacrifice our time, our talent, our efforts, our wealth, our energies, potentially even our health. But ultimately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us to make sure that our intention is clear so that we can see the way forward. We can see the vision that we're trying to achieve. One of the questions we'll have to ask is what will this success mean? When we talk about it, when we talk about it, seeing it, what will it mean? You and I will have to focus on helping this new campus to be established so that people around us, our own families, our own children, our own community members, one, can be encouraged by the success of a plan from A to Z. Number two, to watch Islam actually in action, to see Islam become more in focus, and to see Islam become real in America. It's already happening. It's not that it's not happening, but to establish this campus will bring us that much closer to doing so. We will have to focus on values, on beliefs, on our principles, and to make sure that everything that we, we attempt to achieve is underlined, is based on, is guided by the foundation laid by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This will not be without challenges. And here I'm not talking in a conspiratorial manner. I'm not referring to enemies of Islam. All of that, Alhamdulillah, has become fairly obvious. The challenges I'm talking about is trying to convince ourselves, our families, to see the end that we are trying to help them to see. Nuh alayhi salam, for a thousand, less, thousand years less 50, 
attempted to guide, if you will, his people. Even when he showed them all of the warning signs, even when they were seeing him, looking at it, if you will, the project underway of the building of the ark, even then they did not heed the warnings. So you and I may look at the same thing, but we may not see the same thing. And that's something that we have to talk about. The Ad and the Tamud did not heed the warning signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them. And look, was, look what was their end. So they were looking at the same things as everyone else, but only a few of them saw the true signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and actually paid heed. Our challenge will be to focus first and foremost on education. This community of ours will never advance unless we go back to one word. One word that was literally the beginning of the advent of Islam with Iqra. This one word, this one word gave rise to a message that had profound and lasting impact on the hearts and minds and souls of the very people who were steeped, who were lost in idol worship. It had a most profound and lasting impact in terms of how widespread it was and it reached all around the world. It had a most profound and lasting impact in terms of how lasting it was that today in the year 1434 after Hijrah, the year 2012 of the Roman calendar, you and I sit here discussing how we will be inshallah ta'ala able to help Dar es Salaam al-Huda achieve the dream of finding and in fact building and in fact expanding upon the home of the heart. No one could have predicted when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them uh, 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 glad tidings if you will, that gave them warnings if you will, of all of what would come. In the chapter titled Romans, the Prophet ﷺ was narrating to them the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Alif Lam Mim Ghulibatul Rom, that indeed Rome, the Romans have been defeated. And then after some time in a land nearby, if you will, they will then, after that defeat, again be victorious. People listening to that would have never imagined what was he talking about. How is he able to know these things? They may be, have been able to look at the same things, but they would have never seen what was coming. Your job and my job, brothers and sisters, is to say that we have to look, about, look to see how we can set a systematic plan into action that can literally carry out the plan that the Prophet ﷺ set by making education the first and foremost priority. Al-Huda itself, in the time that I've been in the Washington DC area since 1998, and it was founded before I arrived here, has literally impacted the lives of not only the students, the faculty, the staff, the administration, of those people who served inside its walls, but through whatever they learned inside those walls, through their character being uplifted, through them learning morals, the entire community around benefited. The entire society benefited. And indeed today, just after landing at National Airport, all of the different taxis were being given out to people. The taxi that came to me was to be a reminder about the humble beginnings of Al-Huda in the form of Abu Muhammad al-Sumali, a brother I know who, who was the taxi driver. As we started talking, I told him where I'm headed. And he said, he said, this vision that they have at Dar es Salaam, and he picked up the brochure, so I know, mashallah, the publicity has been working well. He picked it up and he said, this is something all of us have to be behind. And in fact, one of the first principles of Al-Huda, of Al-Huda, when people could look at Al-Huda, but not see what would come, was Ibrahim Adu, Allah Yarhamu, a Somali brother who was in America, working at a, either a bank, a Saudi uh, a embassy or bank, but Imam Safi Khan, in his foresight, recruited him to serve as the uh, principal, I believe, of Al-Huda Islamic School. That is something I learned 
inside a taxi coming here by someone who already has internalized the vision of Al Huda Islamic School. Brothers and sisters, what will come of all of this? What will be the true benefit of all of this? And I can tell you very simply. Listen to the words, the word Ikra, and see what came of that. Look at the plan of Dar es Salaam Al Huda today and make dua for the potential for what will come of that. We are not talking today only about a structure. We are talking about the fact that 50 some, the latest count was 50, Hufad, 50 young boys and girls have memorized the Quran within these walls. What people saw, when they, what people looked at was a structure. What they didn't see was a long term impact of people who have internalized and protected the Quran by memory into their hearts. So what's the benefit to society? Do you know all of the lies that they've been saying about Islam? You could set up a new organization for public relations and media every day of every year and still we would not be able to really fight it. But if you set up institutions such as Dar es Salaam Al Huda, with all of its you know, multiple institutions within that, and especially Al Huda Islamic School, even just a minority of the youth who would come out of this school, what they would go on to do in terms of getting an education in a university, and then letting people know that the backbone of my education happened in this institution called Dar es Salaam. That indeed, the, moral, the morals that, I in, that are within me, that I've engendered, that have been nurtured for me, these are things that I picked up inside this institution. Again, what people may look at would be the structure. What we are trying to get them to see is the long-term impact of indeed people who would come about from this institution who could serve American society at large while improving the condition of Muslims here and around the world. Now again, I said before, the prophets, may Allah's peace be upon all of them, were not without challenges. They faced challenges. Our challenge will be both internal from people who will say that we don't think this is possible within the Muslim community. And we will have to get them to look at what we, what, what, what we I mean, look at it with us, but to see what we see. All of you who are here today have responded to the call because you not only look at the structure, but you see the potential for what will come. The contribution is what I will close with. The contribution to larger society is something that every single one of us must wake up and go to bed with at night. How can Islam help to improve American society? Soon after September the 11th, in one of his lectures, Imam Siraj Wahaj challenged the audience by asking them if indeed the calls were being made, get the Muslims out of America, let them to leave America, get the Muslims away from America. He asked us, would America be better off without the Muslims? Would America be better off with the Muslims? And would America be the same with the Muslims? And I'm saying to you tonight that we have nothing at all to prove to anyone except ourselves by living up to the ideals that are in our religion, by not compromising on the principles and the teachings of the religion. We have absolutely no reason to have an inferiority complex, not only in our thinking, in our vision, because it's never been done, so we should never do it. No. If a campus exists, the infrastructure has been laid out, the piping has been set up, but Allah's plan was that the group initially that got all this done would not be the people who occupy that structure, then all you and I have to do is get people to look at the structure and walk with us those 10 million steps, those 10 million steps and get to the end of that line so that we inshallah ta'ala can occupy and be in that structure and indeed help to educate an entire generation. Brothers and sisters, in closing, this project that is going on right now is but one of many projects in America. 
And I have no personal bias. I am not a board member. I don't have any vested interest in Al Huda Dar es Salaam, Al Huda succeeding, other than to say this the consistency with which the vision has unfolded, the transparency with which the board of Dar es Salaam, Al Huda, its staff and faculty have operated, and the commitment that they have shown to us and to the improvement of society, you can just look at MIST, the Muslim Interscholastic Tournament, and you can see all the students coming together, and you can see how the Al Huda students have stood out. And you can agree with me when I say to you, supporting this project, getting everyone else to start to look at what we're looking at, but also to see what we see will be a, a personal challenge that each of us will have to inshallah ta'ala undertake tonight. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this project. Ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the people who envisioned this project. Ameen. For every person who is either with us now or who has already passed away or moved out of this area who helped even with one aspect of the success of Dar es Salaam. May Allah bless them and their families and may Allah help us tonight in truly achieving the goal that has been set aside for, for us helping Dar es Salaam achieve this new facility inshallah ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.